Hi, welcome to my gear video. Tomorrow, I'm starting my Arizona through hike. I'm going to attempt to through hike the Arizona Trail northbound from the Mexico border to the Utah border. It's about 800 miles. And this is everything I'm bringing with me for the next two months. The Arizona Trail this year looks to be pretty difficult. Uh, the conditions can range from temperatures in 10 degrees to maybe even as high as 110 degrees. I need to deal with snow, ice, rain occasionally. Um, and this is everything I'm bringing to survive. Uh, let's dig into the big three. So my tent for this through hike is the Dan Durston XMID Pro one person tent. You can see it set up. I have staked out additional guy lines to the peaks to make sure that this thing doesn't fall over when uh, the winds get really bad because they can gust uh, pretty high in the desert as well. I'm using MSR Groundhogs, not the minis, the nine inch stakes. I've got eight of those. Uh, and I have additional cordage uh, if I need to do the big rock, little rock kind of maneuver if I can't get these stakes into the ground. Um, so that's, that's where I live. My backpack is the Durston Kakwa 40. It's a small version. I'm only five foot six. It fits me pretty well with a poly cryo uh, pack liner. I um, like this backpack a lot. I've taken it on a couple of trips so far. It definitely will get maxed out on some longer food carries, but I'm okay with that. So I think it's gonna work out just fine. Let's move into our sleep system. So um, everything here is laid out on a Gossamer Gear eight inch pad. I'm bringing this pad mostly to protect my Nemo Tensor, um, which is just the 20 inch. I'm a side sleeper and I'm not that big. So I think it works just fine. Our value of 4.2, get a couple extra uh, tenths of points, I'm sure from this eighth inch. But since I blow this up with air, uh, and I am using the pump sack. Um, this eighth inch pad will hopefully keep uh, the Nemo tensor from popping uh, due to prickly things, because there's a ton of those in the desert. I've got a silk liner from sea to summit. Um, I don't know how many degrees this gives me, maybe five or 10 ex additional degrees over my sleeping uh, quilt. Since the temperature ranges are so vast, I know that I will be a hot sleeper in warmer temperatures. So the silk liner also gives me a way to have a little comfort and something over me when the sleeping quilt is too much and the temperatures are too high. Um, but when the temperatures are low, um, below 20 degrees, I should be comfortable um, adding this silk liner into the mix. I also have an ultralight pillow. This is Sea to Summit. It's the Eros Pillow Ultra Regular. It's just enough pillow for me. Let's go to my Katabatic Gear 20 degree quilt. Love this thing. I have the straps to tie this down to my sleeping pad. Thought I didn't need it. Turns out my shakedown hike proved me wrong. A couple of extra accessories with the tent. Uh, I got a little DCF uh, bag for tent stakes and a little extra cordage. And of course my uh, Dan Durston X-Mid Pro bag got to represent and then the sham wow to wipe down the inside and the outside of the tent from condensation rain snow and ice I'm expecting all of that to happen to me on this trip sleeping bag I'm gonna put it in this stuff sack so this stuff sack gets gets my sleeping bag down to a pretty tiny maybe softball sized uh, amount of space this is a, another seat of summit and it is the Event waterproof. Maybe it's a little bit heavier than I need, but the way that I can ratchet this down with the compression, get the air out of it, really makes it small in my pack, gives me more space for other things, mostly food. Let's go to what I'm hiking in. Um, we can start with shoes. I've got my Ultra Lone Peak 6s, um, like these. I got another pair that I'll be sending to myself about 500 miles into the trail. Um, to replace them when I destroy them. One of the things that I like about these is that the heel has a little extra here uh, to hang on to my micro spikes, which I'm definitely gonna need this year. And then of course it's got the built-in Velcro for my gaiters. Not gonna toss those into the tent. Let's just put them over here into the vestibule. <laughs> 
Um, I will also be hiking in a hat. This is a Mont Bell, it's super light. Um, it's very reflective. This uh, pattern here is reflective. I'm also hiking in ex officio underwear. I'll carry two pairs. I will spend most of my time, most of my hiking in the long sleeve hooded uh, sun hoodie from Outdoor Research, super light. Uh, love the color, uh, feels really good. Darn tough socks, like almost everyone else on trail I feel like, I love the darn toughs. So I'll hike in one pair. And uh, the Dirty Girl Gators, gotta love my Dirty Girl Gators. Then I'll also be hiking in these REI pants. They are for typically for running in colder conditions. My lovely wife got these for me for Christmas. I like them because they have a couple of pockets and the zipper for the zippered pocket is below my hip belt for my backpack. So it doesn't get in the way and it won't rub. One other thing I'll be hiking with, it's currently holding up my tent, are my uh, Black Diamond uh, Alpine Carbon trekking poles. Um, they've got the cork, I like them a lot. I've got some Luco tape wrapped around one of them. This tiny little company makes these magnetic connectors so that I can attach my hiking poles to the sides of my backpack if I don't want to hold them. That's going to be great when I'm vlogging. It's going to be great if I have to scramble. It looks like the conditions on the north rim of the Grand Canyon could call for that. I can just stow away my uh, trekking poles on my backpack while I'm hiking. And let's get into more clothing because we have a lot of clothing. As I mentioned, the temperatures and conditions range a huge amount in Arizona and especially this year. So let's get into cold weather gear. Uh, I've got a buff that I'll be carrying. Sometimes I sleep in that as well. Um, a pair of lightweight uh, gloves. These would typically be glo glove liners, but it's good enough for uh, cold weather, most cold weather conditions, I think, on this trail. Um, from Outdoor Research. And then we'll get into two of my favorite pieces, um, Farpoint Gears uh, Alpha Tech. So this is this 60 GSM hat, keeps me very warm. Again, sometimes I'll sleep in that uh, if I need to. And then also a 60 GSM hoodie. This hoodie is amazing. This one came out last fall and I think I call it pumpkin head. <laughs> Love the thing. Um, super comfy, super warm. I've got my Montbell Plasma 1000 uh, jacket. This one doesn't come with the hood. I have lots of other options for that, so I don't need it. it comes in at around four ounces. This is also the version that does not have pocket, and I don't really think while I'm hiking, I'm gonna put my hands in my pockets very frequently, so should be good to go. Um, let's get into sleeping gear. I would normally never be the sort of person to carry down booties. It's really freaking cold out there this year. There's a possibility that I'll be sleeping in below freezing conditions quite a bit. And I think it's a nice luxury to have. It's just a, an ounce or two, doesn't take up much space. Got another pair of underwear here from Ex Officio and then two more pairs of socks. So I'll be sleeping in one pair, hiking in one pair, and probably drying out one pair that I'm cleaning keep my feet healthy, keep them clean. My base layer, this is from Patagonia. There's a top and a bottom, they're a matching set. It's the Calipine, I believe. So this is a synthetic, not a wool. And if I have to, I'll hike in these uh, under my other clothes if it's really, really cold. Extreme conditions and protection. First and foremost, I've got sunglasses. Um, these are Ray-Bans, they're carbon fiber uh, frame. They're about 18 grams. Uh, the sunglasses will be good both for uh, high sun conditions and also uh, high snow conditions. I do not want to get snow blindness. Got my micro spikes. This is a black diamond. Um, they're pretty lightweight. They fit around my shoes and as I mentioned, they hold on really nice and snug there. I also have a bug net, head net, again from Sea to Summit. I have uh, shorts and a lightweight shirt. Um, this could be town clothes and also if, uh, if the weather is really warm and the sun isn't too aggressive, I might wear these instead of my long sleeves and long pants. Um, let's get into rain and wind protection. So I am rocking these DCF mittens. Um, they will keep me um, water resistant to a pretty decent amount and they also keep me safe from heavy wind. Um, one thing I like about these is that if my tent has rain or snow on it and I need to wipe down the outside, um, I can pop one of these gloves on and keep my hand from getting wet because wet and cold is usually pretty miserable. I have sun gloves from Outdoor Research, full finger gloves, do not want to get sunburned. My Montbello rain jacket, love this thing, does great against wind, does great against the rain. Also another layer if I really need it for warmth. 
it looks like there's some possibility that I will be doing some post holing through Arizona and I'll be doing a decent amount of trekking through snow and ice. And if that is the case, I picked up from REI some of their Gore-Tex rain pants. Um, I will put these on as an outside layer to protect my standard pants and protect my legs from getting torn up from the ice so I can keep moving. Camp shoes and town shoes. Um, these are uh, Vibrams. I do not remember the name of this style of shoe. They're extremely light. I found very few things that are as light and provide a covered toe and a decent amount of tread. I could use this for water crossings in temperatures when that makes sense. I can use it around town. Okay, now we're moving into electronics. Um, I am planning to vlog this trip, as you can tell. So I have a bunch of electronics related to that. Definitely adds to the base weight, but I think it could be fun. So uh, let's start with some of the more uh, valuable things. So we've got the Garmin InReach Mini 2, so that I can always call for help, communicate with my family. Of course, a headlamp, the most recent Nikkor, I think it's the NU25, USB-C for recharging, which is really nice. Their shock cord is okay. Uh, it'll do the job, I just left it on there. Um, I've got a little temperature, outdoor temperature gauge, um, and I'm gonna keep this on my pack. Uh, this will help me remember to put my water filter uh, in a pocket or keep it with me when I'm sleeping, if it's freezing. It also helped me to remember to throw some water in my pot so that I can warm it up for coffee in the morning if it's going to freeze. Apple AirPods Pro, if I need to listen to something. Uh, of course, a wall charger. This is the uh, Anker uh, GAN Prime. Um, I can charge up to three things here, which is pretty handy. Speaking of charging, two Nikkor 10,000 milliamp batteries. I stuck them together using Garage Grown Gear stickers. Thank you very much, Garage Grown Gear. Um, this will keep my devices charged up pretty decently. Um, and then we get into charging cables. So I have two one foot charging cables that are USB-C to USB-C. Um, I also have two of these USB-C to USB-A uh, adapters because I have a, a couple of USB-A ports on my power bank and one of them on my wall plug, so I wanna be able to use those. A micro USB charger, Apple Watch charger, uh, and a three foot USB-C charger, a three foot lightning cable charger as well. Um, I'll pause here and mention, I forgot, uh, my iPhone, which I'll be carrying, and my Apple Watch, where I will be using the Work Outdoors app to track my daily hikes. So I'm recording this right now on an Insta360 camera and I'm using Rode wireless mics. I also have a selfie stick for the Insta360 camera and I have the extended version. So it can go up to 10 feet, uh, three meters. It's a pretty beefy boy and uh, it's on a tripod right now as well. Along with that, I have uh, lens covers. This is a replacement set in case I break or damage the ones that are already on the camera. I have a one terabyte external hard disk, again, for video editing. And I'm doing my video editing. Oh, let me back up. This is the case for the Rode wireless mics. I'm doing my video editing on an iPad mini and I have a pencil to go with it. I found this to be extremely useful, um, pretty easy to work with, and pretty lightweight for what it's doing for me. And a backup battery for the Insta360. This is a bit where you might think it's a little bit silly, but for me it works out really well. I have a fold-out keyboard. And all of that will go in this uh, Hilltop Packs roll top sack. Um, this is my ditty bag, so in here, I don't want to unpack this whole thing, but I have toothpaste. I'm using toothpaste tabs, so I'll be putting those in my mouth, chewing them up. Got a little bit of uh, Advil. I have sunscreen. I have a brush for my luscious hair. And that brush also has a mirror in case I need to um, signal for help and get rescued and my GPS devices and my satellite communicators don't work. Of course, I've got a toothbrush. I've got fingernail clippers. I have some KT tape, um, so if I need to tape myself up. Um, I have Dr. Bronner's. That's the soap I'll be carrying. I also have 
um, some uh, tenacious tape in case I need to repair uh, gear. And then of course, extra hair ties. For a knife and um, utilities, I'll be carrying the Gerber Dime. One of the things I really like about the Gerber Dime for being in the desert is that it comes with pliers. If I need to get a thorny thing out of me or my gear, I can use these pliers. And there are a lot of thorny things in Arizona. I have an extra bottle cap. This is a sport cap. Um, it's the style that you would get with a smart water bottle. And I bought the, a, a couple of these off of Garage Grown Gear and they all have yellow on the top. So I know that it's my bottle. Um, this is my hanky. I'll be putting this on the outside of my backpack to wipe my nose most of the time. I got this from REI and I think they call it Saguaro Nights. Uh, pretty apropos for the Arizona Trail. This is a camp towel. It's from Sea to Summit. And this is mostly to dry myself off or keep myself clean if I need to. Um, my wallet, which of course has cards, little cash, that sort of thing. Um, and an ultralight sit pad. And I will also use this sort of as my welcome mat outside of my tent, my poop kit. So this year I am going with the Kulo Clean Bidet. I'm gonna pop that onto one of my water bottles, and clean myself off, use some hand sanitizer. This is hand sanitizer my wife got me for Christmas. It says, I just shit in the woods. Thanks, babe. And I put all of this into a repurposed bag. This would have been for uh, tent stakes, but since I have a pretty aggressive trowel and dig tool, uh, because I'm expecting the ground in Arizona to be a little bit difficult, um, I figured I could keep my pack safe by keeping it all in here. Let's move on to food. So right off the bat, here are some snacks I'll be carrying. So I have things like uh, gels, um, bars of various kinds, a little bit of candy. I love these Stinger waffles and some energy chews. Um, I intend to get my electrolytes primarily from, at least from the start, um, from these chews and these gels. That'll give me what I need in addition to the food that I'm carrying. Speaking of food, I'm rocking the Ursac Major. I have an OPSAC in here. Currently I have a five day food haul in this thing, so it's pretty full. And since it's the beginning of a through hike, I probably have too much. But it all fits in here and I can keep it safe from critters and uh, mostly just critters here in Arizona and the occasional bear if I'm super unlucky. I intend to cook. Um, in here, breakfast is gonna be oatmeal and nut butter. Dinners are gonna be de rehydrated or dehydrated meals. So this is my cook kit. I just got it in this nice little G DCF bag. Um, I love coffee and we'll talk about that in a minute. So I am rocking the X mug here, 16 ounces, so I can have a nice coffee in the morning. The Toke 750 milliliter pot, of course. An Amicus Soto stove. And of course I've got my uh, fuel canister and a really lightweight microfiber towel to keep everything clean and dry. So that's how I intend to cook. Interestingly, I am going to carry a second fuel canister. Um, we pack our fears and I am worried about running out of fuel. Um, so I'm going to toss one of these in the bottom of my bag and the other one will stay closer to my food and in my, in my cook kit. That way when one dies, I know that I should replace it. Um, that should be good to go. I mentioned I'm going to make oatmeal in the morning, so I am going to carry a uh, lightweight bowl. So this is again a Sea to Summit. It folds out. I can put this if I want to onto heat. Probably won't. Um, but I'm going to do oatmeal and nut butter mixed together. That makes my breakfast about 700 calories. When I have an amount that makes me feel full, it's a good way to get started. Going to eat everything with the polished Tokes titanium long handled spoon. I know it's a fan favorite and it's a favorite for me as well. Now, here's where I probably diverge from most. I am a big fan of coffee and particularly high quality coffee. So this bag right here represents my coffee kit. Um, first off, I mentioned that I'm gonna drink coffee out of this mug and I'm gonna do that using this Jogo straw. The Jogo straw acts kind of like a French press. I put it in here with some fresh grounds and some hot water, wait a few minutes, stir it around, and I sip the coffee through the straw. It filters through the bottom and I have fresh, high quality coffee. Now, 
If you like good coffee, you know that there are two important ingredients. One is freshly ground coffee, and the other one is water at the right temperature. Let's deal with freshly ground coffee first. I will be carrying a coffee grinder. This coffee grinder is made from titanium and carbon fiber. Um, it is made from Orphan Espresso, it's called the Fixie. And it's called the Fixie because the way that you figure out your grind is by affixing a certain number of plates in here and that determines how fine the grind is. But I just add the, um, the handle to the grinder, I put coffee in here, grind it up in the morning, and then it comes out the other side here into this catch, uh, catch tray or catch cup. I think it's worth it. I'm gonna have really good coffee in the morning and that is going to improve my life every single day. I have taken this on winter backpacking and even when it's too cold to feel like making a meal at camp, because I know that getting hiking is the warmest thing to do, I use this anyway now. The second aspect is water at the right temperature. So I am bringing a temperature gauge to ensure that I get water right around that 196 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is my coffee gear. And we are getting right down to the end. Let's discuss water. Obviously I am hiking through the desert. Now this year might have more water than we would expect, but still I should be prepared for long water carries. So I am bringing three smart water bottles. Two of them are one liter, and I have put the Bottle Genie stickers on these one liters. I love this thing. Um, I can verify that it is still operating correctly by doing a test about whether or not it's been frozen or it's been compromised. Um, I love that it's sealed on both sides so I can pop it into my sleeping bag or my pants or my underwear or wherever I need it to be in order to keep it clean and I will be using a two liter CNOC or NOC outdoors um, uh, dirty water bag. So all together, if I have to, I can carry 5.5 liters of water. If we assume about a liter every five miles, that gives me nearly 30 miles that I can get between reliable water sources. And I'm willing to carry that in order to survive. That is everything I'm bringing on the Arizona Trail to deal with conditions at 10 degrees or 100 degrees. I anticipate snow and ice on my very first day, wind gusts well over 30 miles an hour, elevation changes uh, going up to 9,000 feet, down to 2,000 feet. Um, basically, this, this uh, trail seems like it throws everything at you. And since uh, this is my first through hike, I think I should be prepared. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, what would you carry differently? What do you think is ridiculous? And why is it the coffee grinder? Let me know in the comments. Um, please follow along with my adventure. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. And thank you very much. Let's see if I survive. <laughs>